next technique I'd like to talk about is receiving throws at second base in bunt situations. Now softball is a lot different than baseball because in baseball the first baseman and third baseman play behind the bag. In softball most of the action is in front of the bags or inside the baselines. So as a shortstop covering second base in a bunt situation we have to do a couple of things. Number one we have to realize how hard the ball was hit to the third baseman or the first baseman. We want to try to get ourselves in a position, a good athletic position, where we become a first baseman. And we're able to move to our right or to our left. So we're going to work the inside of the baseline. We get to the bag, try to make contact with the bag. And now what we're going to do is we're going to become a first baseman and we're going to take our throwing foot to the bag and our glove foot to the throw. Now from there, I can either secure the catch and get the one out or if I want to turn the double play from here, then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right foot or my throwing foot and jab down and get in a position to throw. So it's going to look like this. If I get to the bag, find the bag with my right foot, step to the ball with my left foot, and then if I'm going to turn it, get back down and throw. If the ball happens to go to the pitcher, then what we would like to do is cover the bag with our left foot. This allows me a lot of flexibility to get rid of the ball quick. Because by catching the bag with my left foot, now I have my right foot that I can step to the ball with and put myself in position to relay the throw to first base. To review the shortstop covering second base in bunt situations, get into a good athletic position at the front of the bag. Take your throwing hand foot to the bag. Step with your glove hand foot to the throw. If you're going to turn the double play, step with your throwing hand foot, turn, and throw to first base. If the ball is going to the pitcher, then cover the bag with your glove hand foot, step to the ball with your throwing hand foot, and relay the ball to first base. The responsibility of covering the bag at second base on a steal belongs to either the shortstop or the second baseman. A lot will depend on the hitter, a lot will depend on the situation. Primarily in softball, the shortstop covers the bag. Now, there's a couple things you've got to think about. When the steal is on, obviously our first priority as an infielder is to make sure they don't hit the ball. So we have to make sure that we see the ball by the hitter as much as possible, and we also have to adjust our positioning. Unfortunately, in softball, you can't cover second base and cover the hole at the same time. You've got to give up one or the other. So anytime that we're in a steal situation, our second baseman and shortstop are going to cheat a little closer toward the bag, which cuts down the distance. We don't have to cheat toward the bag, but if I move forward, I've cut that distance down. Now, the thing I want to talk about is receiving the throw. The shortstop's going to go to the bag, and there's two types of ways that we receive the throw. The first one, and a very effective one, is getting in front of the bag. This allows us, obviously, to pick any short hops that we might get from the catcher. But the key element in taking throws and making tags is to always keep the glove as close to the tag as possible. The one thing we don't want our shortstops or second basemen to do is to reach for the ball. The ball is going to travel much quicker than your hands can travel. So let the ball travel, keep your glove as close to the tag as possible, and now we're going to go ahead and give that runner some room and we're going to make the tag with the back of our glove and then we're going to get the glove out as soon as possible. The one thing we don't want to do is try to make the tag in this fashion. Now we've got the glove open, they slide in, ball pops out. So we want to try to secure the ball and tag with the back of our glove. The other way is to straddle the bag. I have sometimes shortstops that have a hard time finding this good position. They either get too far up in front and lose track of the bag. So what I have them do is I have them go directly to the bag and we're actually going to straddle the bag. You see a lot of this in baseball. And this is not a bad uh, way to do it because now my glove is right over the tag. And all I want to do is secure the catch, tag with the back of the glove, and get it out. From the second baseman's perspective, there are times when we have our second baseman cover second on a steal. A good example would be if we have a slapper up. Uh, a slapper that may be putting that 
ground ball in the six hole or to the shortstop, the last thing we want is our shortstop vacating early. So we'll change our coverage and have our second baseman cover. The easiest way for the second baseman to cover the bag on a steal would be to straddle it. We're going to have them get to the bag as quick as they can, straddle the bag, keeping their glove as close to the tag as possible, and then once again using a good technique of tagging with the back of the glove and getting the glove out. To review receiving throws in steal situations, get in front of the bag, make the tag with the back of the glove, get the glove out and up as soon as possible, or go directly to the bag, straddle it, tag with the back of your glove, and quickly get the glove up. When the second baseman is covering second on a steal, straddle the bag, keep your glove as close to the tag as possible, and tag with the back of your glove. Whether I'm a second baseman or a shortstop, principles of making the tag at second base on throws from the outfield are primarily the same. What we like to do is divide the field in half. Anything from center field to the left field line, our second baseman would be the primary receiver of the throw. Anything from center field to the right field line, now our shortstop has a responsibility of covering second base. A couple of key principles about receiving throws. Number one, we always want to keep the glove as close to the tag as possible. So in this instance, if we're taking a throw from left field, we want to make sure that we put ourselves in a good position to where we're opened up toward the throw, and we keep our glove as close to the tag. The last thing we would want to do is do this. Now what happens here is I'm taking the glove farther away from the tag, therefore now I'm going to be reaching. Okay, so it's very important that you get in a proper position. We always want to open up to the throw, so if the throw is down the left field line, I'm going to open up in this fashion and make the tag. If the throw is more in left field, then I'm going to have to open up even more so to make the tag. If the ball goes into uh, left center field, now I'm going to have to turn over and open up this away and make the tag. And the same thing to the right side of the outfield. We always want to try to keep the glove as close to the tag as possible. To review making the tag at second base on throws from the outfield, get in a good position with your body open to the throw and keep your glove as close to the tag as possible. A couple of techniques I'd like to talk to you about when you're the relay person and they're very important. The first thing is you want to give the outfielder both a visual and verbal cue. So we teach our outfielders as they're going out and getting in line with the intended target. So if the intended target is third base, it's their responsibility to line themselves up toward third. If it's home, it's their responsibility to put their head on the swivel and line up toward home. But we want to make sure we give that outfielder both a visual and verbal cue because many a times their back is turned from you. We have our infielders go out and yell, hit me, hit me, hit me with their hands up. And that's, a, that's the verbal and visual cue that we give. Now, as the ball is thrown from the outfielder, we want to try to put ourselves in a position where we can open up to the throw, and as we open up and secure the catch, we're going to, we're going to transfer our feet or exchange our feet so that we can gain some momentum to make a throw. To review receiving throws in a relay situation, put your hands up in the air to give the outfielder a visual cue. Open up to the throw. Secure the ball. Then replace your feet to gain momentum to make the throw.